everyone. As you can see by the background, we are on the water. We made it just in the nick of time for the arrival of our friends Steve and Terry, and I mean literally. We moved the boat from the yard to El Mero, jumped in the truck, and drove straight to the airport in Hermosillo. In the hectic days before splashing, we made a huge power source change, converting from wet cell batteries to a lithium ion battery. The first hurdle was to actually get the battery aboard. It weighs a little over 100 pounds. We constructed a webbed cargo net and first tested it lifting my 80 pound sewing machine using the boom. That worked. So the next morning, Roberto came and helped us with the battery. Before we could bring the battery aboard, I had to modify the battery compartment to accept the different dimensions. There are different types of lithium ion batteries to choose from. The easiest would be a direct replacement. In other words, lithium ion batteries size the same as the wet cells they are replacing. In those type of batteries, a battery management system or BMS is built into each battery. The BMS manages the battery for charging and discharge and can turn off the cells if something malfunctions to prevent overheating and fire. The battery I eventually chose was a single unit purchased from Planet Energy. The battery is comprised of hundreds of lithium cells and a dual channel BMS which maintains separate circuits for load and charging. The main reason I chose the single unit was because of the space it would save. This battery compartment can now be reallocated to other storage. The BMS was actually larger than I expected and the 4 aught connecting cables were hard to maneuver. I eventually got everything wired but configuring the Xantrex to charge the battery was not as straightforward as I had hoped. Charging away? Yep. Turns out that while the Xantrix can charge the battery, our model requires a firmware upgrade that will have to be done in the States. Upon connecting our solar controller, I discovered it didn't have the capability to be configured to the specifications of the battery's manufacturer, Lithionics. After talking to their support and checking the website, I decided on a Victron MPPT controller, which our friends Steve and Terry brought with them. I promptly put Steve to work, helping me hook it up. One of the interesting facets of the Victron is the app that interfaces via Bluetooth to the controller and maintains a history of the day-to-day -day charging. On Trudy's phone, it is in French, as that is her phone's default language. For now, we are only using solar to charge the battery. The new regulator and the alternator are not working properly and I will troubleshoot that when we have time. At this time, the solar panels are doing an admirable job keeping the battery charged, and we are very pleased with the battery's performance. It was our third time to splash La Brisa, and one would think it would be old hat. For me, it is an anxious time. Leaving my familiar, secure neighborhood, where I am surrounded by old and new friends and stepping out into the unknown, saying goodbye to my yard, crossing the street into the old yard and on towards the water, Roberto guiding the way and Alejandro taking great care with getting us into the water. It's always a sigh of relief once we are in the water and everything is okay. Now I'm ready and looking forward to new adventures. During the summer, Omar, our diesel mechanic, installed new feet on the engine, which required realignment of the engine. Once we hit the water, we overnighted in the slip at the yard so the hull would have an opportunity to regain its normal shape instead of the twists and strains of being on stands. Late the next afternoon, Omar came and aligned the couplings 
And the next morning, he accompanied us over to El Mero, checking on the engine's performance along the way. It was great to see Steve and Terry, and we spent a week doing a little cruising along the Sonoran coast. In snug anchorages, we played games and enjoyed margaritas in the new cups Steve and Terry's daughter had personalized for us. It was while we were anchored in Ensenada Carrizal and using the kayak borrowed from Nick and Ika that Blondie had a mishap and fell off the kayak. She was quite a bit more careful after that. In San Carlos, we visited the newly completed lookout, our Mirador, which overlooks Caleta Lalo and some beautiful coastline. It was as we were motoring out of the anchorage at Algodones, Lee discovered a diesel leak coming from the injector pump, yet he was unable to determine the exact source of the leak. Omar came to our rescue yet again and quickly diagnosed the problem. With the engine running, you can see the fine mist of diesel being sprayed from the leak. An injector pump check valve had slightly deformed over the years. A new check valve was installed and the engine runs perfectly now. With our daughter Jessica and husband Greg, we celebrated Thanksgiving at a potluck in the yard and they got a taste of the cruiser lifestyle. They also enjoyed the zip lines at Cañón Nacapule. Their visit was over all too soon, and it was time for us to start thinking of our crossing to Baja. Join us in the next episode when we make our crossing. So until then, 